Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is level order traversal in spiral form and it is an easy level problem. So the problem statement says that we have been given a binary tree and a task is to find the spiral order traversal. So let me just first explain you what uh, they mean by a spiral order traversal and then we'll discuss how we can solve this problem and also the time and space complexity of this problem is both open. So we are going to find a solution which works in this expected time and space complexity. So let us have a look at the example. So this is the structure or the tree structure that they have given to us. Now they say that uh, assume this node to be at level 0 and then this node to be at level 1 and then this node to be at level 2. So for all these even levels, we have to traverse the tree from right to left like this and for, the, for all these odd levels, we have to traverse the tree from left to right like this, right. So for the last level, since it is an even level, we are going to traverse from right to left. So the final, final traversal should look something like this, 1, uh, 2, 3, then 4, 5, 6 and 7. So this should be our final output in a vector. Right. So this is what the question is asking. Now uh, there are actually multiple ways of solving this particular problem and we are going to discuss a very interesting method which is using a DQ. So if you are not already familiar what a DQ is, it is nothing just like a simple queue. It is called a doubly ended queue. All the functionalities are almost similar. The constraint with the queue is that you can only push from the back, you can push from the back and pop from the front. Right, so this is the constraint on the queue, on a normal queue. With the help of DQ, you can push both on back and both on front and similarly you can pop from both back and front. Right, so this is the advantage with DQ. So how are we actually going to use this particular uh, data structure to our advantage in this particular question? Let us see. So initially we have 1, 2 and 3. Let's say this is 1, this is node 1, this is node 2 and this is node 3. Right. So, this is the even level. So since there is only one element, it won't even matter which uh, uh, which side you traverse from. But let's say we are traversing from the back. So initially your DQ, let me just write it as Q, will contain the element. Let's say we also we are also storing its level. So it will be containing 0, 1. Right. So it will not actually be storing the node value. It, is, it will be storing the node pointer. But for simplicity and understanding, let us assume it to be 1 here. Right. So initially the data in the Q is 0, 1 in a pair. Now where 0 denotes the current level and 1 denotes the current node, right. Now you will realize that you are at an odd level, right. So what you will try to do is you will try to extract normally uh, in a level order traversal we try to extract elements from the front or in any general queue operation. But since I know that I am on an even level, I will try to extract elements from the back, right. And, and whenever I find a new element. Let's say, let me just create more nodes. So let's say this is my current level and so this is going to be some even level, let's say 4 and this is going to be some odd level, let's say 5. So my current level looks something like this and these nodes are coming from somewhere upwards, right. So what I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to go from right to left. So first of all, I'll visit this particular node, right. I'm taking the elements from the back and I'm popping it from the back. But remember, whenever you are pushing its children, Whenever you are pushing its children, you are going to push them in the front of the queue, right. So normally, whenever we do level order traversal, we push the left child first and then the right child, right. But in this case, whenever the level is even, you are going to push the right child first and then the left child. Let's say this right child is 20 and this left child is 19, right. So you are going to push first 20 in the front of the queue, let's say this is the remaining queue and then 19 in the front of the queue. Then this element will be popped. Then when you come to this particular node, you will push the right child, let's say it is 18, then you push the left child, let's say it is 17. So this way you see that all the new elements are being added to the front of the queue, right. Normally we add them to the back but since we are adding to the front of the queue, we also have to reverse the order in which we are adding those elements. Otherwise if you still push the left child first, it will be in an order like this. Right, which is not valid, it is not a valid order because 19 is coming before 20 in a level order traversal. Right, we still have to maintain that property of the queue which we follow in a level order traversal. It says that whenever we are at an even level, we are just going to pop from the back. Right, 
so whenever you are you are at an even level you're going to towards or you're going to pop elements from the back making sure that you're always pushing the right child first and then the left child right so if you do this and push all the elements in the in the front of the queue all of those elements will be present in your front of the queue and eventually what will happen you will exhaust all of these elements from here right whenever you move on to the next level let's say you are at level 5 so you're going to now normally continue your operation popping elements from the front of the queue and taking its value and then pushing their left and right child respectively to the back of the queue right so let me just write it clearly this will be our final conclusion what do we do we are going to maintain a dq at even level let's let us discuss what we are, what we are going to do so we are going to pop elements from from back right push push new element elements to front and push right child first right these are the three things that we need to take care of at odd level what we are going to do we are going to pop elements from front we are going to push push new elements to back and push left child first right so these are the things that we need to take care of let me just move it upwards so if you maintain these steps you will be able to solve this particular problem now there is one more very important part and that will be more clear to you when you actually see the code but i'm just giving you an idea of what we'll be discussing so in order to identify which level are you currently at you have to maintain another extra variable so let's say that variable is current level right so it will be initially zero because we'll be starting off with a zeroth level now if you are at an or even level you remember we're going to pop elements on the back right so as long as as long as the level of the element at the back of the queue is same at this particular value that means your level has not changed whenever whenever the level at the back of the queue has changed and it is not equal to current level that means all the elements of that particular level have been exhausted and now you need to increment your level so in that particular case you're going to increment your level and now you will start popping elements in the front of the queue right similarly when you whenever you were at an odd level you are popping elements from the front and as soon as the level of the element in front of the queue is not equal to current level that means you have exhausted all the elements of that particular level and now you need to increment your current level right so this is something that you need to take care of with the help of this extra variable so now let us have a look at the code so what i do i created a dq of pairs of integers and nodes and i have pushed back the root node at the zeroth level now initialize my vector of answer and initialize my current level with zero so while my queue is not empty i have initialized two variables level and node so this level is the level of my current level. now if the current level is odd and the element at the front of the queue has the level equals to my current level that means i have no problem but if it is not equal so actually i didn't need this part what i can just directly do is if this value is not equal i am going to increment my current level right similarly if the value of current level is even i need to check it from the back and similarly what i can do if this value if this value is not equal i can increment my value of current level right so this is something you will have to do now if current level is odd i have to pop elements from the front so i uh, update the values and update the front element otherwise i update the elements from the back i copy it and pop the back element right now what i do is i just push back this particular value to my answer vector what is the data in the current so i just push back this node data into my answer vector now if the level is odd i've already told you if the level is odd you have to push the left element first and then the right, right element otherwise you have to push the right element first and then the left element right so you can just check whether it is not equal to null pointer if it is not null pointer then you can push it by incrementing a level similarly for the right node as well and similarly here you can just increment the level and push back the right and the left node respectively now at the end you can just return your answer value and this will be the final solution so let me just submit this and show you that this particular code works
So I believe like there's some compilation error. Yeah, we removed the brackets, but we did not remove it here. Let me just compile first. So if it's compiling file now, let me just submit this code. We actually changed the code a little bit here. So that is why we forgot to like include the brackets properly. And now you see it passes all the test cases and the solution is absolutely correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did and consider dropping a like in this video and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and you'll be able to reach more number of people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So I see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet. In case you're one of them, then definitely consider subscribing. It's always free of cost and you can always subscribe if you don't find the videos interesting later. So share this channel with your friends. Until the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe. Bye-bye.